Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter number 21. I really want to draw us into this and maybe educate our hearts and minds a bit more on something that maybe we're somewhat already familiar with, but uh, draw it in a little closer, give you more nuggets of truth that just takes you deeper to the Word of God. I believe there are things that I've studied even as I, I was preparing for this message that uh, gave me uh, just a, a fresh perspective because it really wasn't as I thought it was. Amen. As much as I've looked at this, uh, I'm going to share some, some, some insights to you. Let me just say that um, mocking God, mocking God, Amen is something that I believe goes on in society. I believe it goes on in church. I believe it goes on in the lives of us as individuals. Because we can doubt God. We cannot take God at His word. We can say, I can hold on to this and I'm not going to let go, thinking that we won't come into accountability for it. But David was all over the message tonight. I was just say, go ahead, brother David. Uh, he, he was just, he was on it tonight. And I appreciate that. It makes me feel confident uh, in giving the word of God. But in Genesis chapter number 21, verse number 8, um, I, I could really jump back and read more than that. But uh, Genesis 21, verse number 8, you'll find that the Lord uh, had visited Sarah and he spoke to her and she uh, conceived and she bare a son in her old age. And uh, 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 the son's name was Isaac. Uh, and, and Abraham did something different. Uh, 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 God had given him the covenant of circumcision. Isaac was circumcised. And, and the Bible says that God made uh, Sarah to laugh. Uh, so that uh, all who hear will laugh with her. Amen. And... and uh, 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 in verse number 7, I'm going to jump back there. No, I said 8. The Bible says, And she, who would have said, uh, who said unto Abraham, that Sarah should have given, ch uh, uh, given children suck, for I have borne him a son in his old age. And the child grew and was weaned. I'm going to jump back and talk about all this in a moment. And Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which was born of Abraham, mocking. Saw Ishmael mocking. All right, and the Bible says, Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son. For the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. Let's just stop right there. Now, I know that this is going to sound quite different to us, but understand that we are dealing with a different culture, we are dealing with a different time, and so we know the story that, 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 that Abraham and Sarah, they wanted a child, and uh, God had promised a child, but they staggered at the promises of God, and Sarah had said to Abraham, her husband, just go and lie with our handmaid Hagar and have a child with her. I'm too old, it's not going to happen. And so we know that that's exactly what happened. They, uh, uh, Abraham and Hagar, uh, were together and they conceived a son whose name was Ishmael. Now, some times passed, and uh, really more time than what we think in our mind. We may want to think a month, we may want to think a year, we may want to think two years, but actually many years have passed. Uh, uh, really, probably 10 to early teens years has passed. And uh, we find that now uh, Sarah, uh, she laughs at the promise of God, but she finds herself a child. And the Bible says that she gave birth to this child whose name was Isaac. Now, when she gives birth, that there is this conflict, and you can imagine that in your mind that there is conflict, and maybe you're thinking, well, these babies are months apart or, or close in age, so there's a lot of comp competition, a lot of conflict. Quite different than we can imagine. 
Once again, probably somewhere around 10 even to 13 years of difference in age. Amen. So here is, is Ishmael, who's 10 to 13 years old. Most within 13. We'll give a little bit of flex there. Amen. When, when, when uh, uh, this baby is born, his, his name is Isaac. And so, can you imagine, uh, some tr traditions would say that Isaac is five years old when he's getting weaned. Now, in our, our culture, that seems extreme, okay? But in this culture, it, 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 it's not so extreme. So anywhere from three to five, some leaning toward five, they made that day that he is weaned. Now, there was a big celebration this day. Uh, you, you might think, boy, there's a celebration that day, too. They start eating food, and uh, I, I, I'm not feeding formula anymore, and all that. Uh, uh, you know, what, however it is, you know, at, at that time when a baby is off of the bottle, uh, you may think, but in this culture, uh, there was a celebration because there was a transition from that child in its infancy and, 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 and youngness to where uh, uh, that, that, that bond with the mother now is going to be transferred over and the father is going to start taking some, some more of a leadership role to, to direct this son in the right direction. And so there, there, there is a big pivotal point for, for this culture. And so Brother David, they call a celebration. Uh, they're going to rejoice. They're going to have a party. And that's exactly what goes on. They call their family and their friends. And, and this is a time of life where there is rejoicing. Amen. Excitement. There is a shift. But the Bible says that Sarah saw Hagar, the Egyptian, her son, mocking. Mocking. So here it is that the firstborn is mocking the second. That's so important for you to get in your mind right now. The firstborn mocking the secondborn. God is not a God to be mocked tonight. If you study out, you'll find that an early American uh, author named Ernest Hemingway had ideas way back many years ago that he didn't take the word of God for what it is that the wages of sin is death, and the gift of God is eternal life. He mocked the Lord's Prayer, and he said this, this. He said, are nada, who, who, who are nada, nada be thy name. You may say, what, what does nada mean? Nada in Spanish means nothing. And so he was saying, are nothing, who are nothing, uh, nothing be thy name. Amen. And, and, and it wasn't until some years later that Ernest Hemingway, this author who mocked God, shot himself in the brain and killed himself. You, you may uh, remember that there was a group that, that, that a lot of people knew that that was the early days of rock and roll and, and, and the Beatles was that group and there was a man in that, that group his name was John Lennon and John Lennon wrote this he said imagine there is no heaven it's easy if you try no hell below us above us only sky imagine all the people living for today. You know, uh, there is a plaque that stands in honor of John Lennon and it says, imagine uh, John Lennon really mocked God, if you would, but there came a day when uh, in mockery God said enough is enough and even John Lennon's life was taken uh, by someone who assassinated him. Amen. Uh, God will not be mocked. So, you look at John Lennon's life. Some of you have maybe heard the name of a man named Thomas Andrew. Thomas Andrews was just an amazing uh, a man himself when you look at his talent and his skill because he was a designer of luxurious ships. He designed and he built a ship that many of us know, amen, and have studied about, and it's part of our, our culture that was called the Titanic. And that was unsure whether there was a busboy or a 
young man working or whether Thomas Andrews said this himself. Amen. But the, the, the message that was given from the Titanic is that even God Himself can't sink this ship. And on its a virgin voyage, there with 1,500 people on board, we know the story, striking an iceberg, and there it went down. Amen. God will not be mocked. Amen. And so we're looking here at, at, at our text, and it said that Ishmael mocked, he scoffed, uh, that of Isaac. Amen. It means to sport, to jeer, to deride. Amen. The Bible says, Blessed is the man who walketh, uh, 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 walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. You take that word scornful there in, in, in Psalm chapter 1, verse number 1. And Brother Craig, it really means the scornful or mockers. Uh, the godly doesn't sit in the place where there are mockers of God. There's a downward path to sit be on the path, stand, and then the sit. There's a downward motion that comes with the mockery of God. But in our society, there is a mockery of God. Do you remember that when uh, uh, those uh, 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 sons of the prophets mocked Elijah, amen, the bears came out, uh, uh, she bears came out and, and, and ate them. It's interesting that if you read on over in Galatians, if you turn there, I'm getting some work trying to lay a basis this evening. Galatians chapter number 4, and then I'll reference this again. Galatians chapter number 4, and really, um, verse number 4, the Bible says, Tell me, ye who desire to be under the law, do you not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one a bondman, or the bondman was Hagar's son, and the other by a free woman, Sarah. And we'll be referencing that back again. So we look and we see that here is the bondwoman's son who scoffed God, uh, God. But we find the free woman's son who was a worshiper of God. Once again, in your mind, I want you to bear with me tonight that here it is, this 18-year-old and this 5-year-old, the 18-year-old is mocking and scoffing the 5-year-old, the 18-year was of a bond woman, uh, the 5-year-old brother David was of a free woman, and so here it is that we are children of Abraham, particularly of Isaac, not children of Ishmael. They, they share the same father, but they do not share the same mother. Ishmael born of Hagar, Isaac born of Sarah, Ishmael Ishmael, the picture of being once. Isaac, the one picture of being born twice. The second born. And so here it is. Amen. It, 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 the customary party that is being given. Ishmael, this teenager, he's mocking and he is scorning with glee. Amen. And, and, and it irritates the second born. And so I want you to realize that to the second born tonight, there is an irritant of the first born. To the second born tonight, there is an irritant uh, 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 the first born. And so there is that fight. Do you understand what I'm trying to bring down and home to us tonight? That for every one of us here who have been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, not only have we been first born, but we have been second born through the blood of Jesus Christ. And there is that within us, amen, that the firstborn can raise up its ugly head and mock and sneer and ridicule the secondborn. But there is something that is very important for us in our life that we have to get rid of the firstborn, that the secondborn may have liberty to grow and be nurtured and be who God wants them to be. And so tonight, Brother David, we got to get rid of the firstborn. Every one of us have a responsibility to get rid of that firstborn. No mocker, as no matter how close they are in the family, we've got to get rid of that mocker. It's so important for us in our life to live for God in a very confident, confident way. 
You know, there are people that you will talk to, and there's folks that every one of us know in here that want set with where we set and experience what we experience. But somewhere along the line, they walked away from the holiness and the good things of God. And now they are a mocker and they're a scoffer of righteous living and what God requires of us. Amen? Amen. But we have to bring ourselves to a place where we say goodbye to scoff. Whether it's internally or whether it's externally. Amen. God will not be mocked tonight. And so, in 2 Peter, chapter number 3, turn there this evening. In 2 Peter, chapter number 3, verse number 3 and 4, the Bible says, knowing this first, that there shall come a time in the last days scoffers, scoffers, walking after their own lust and saying, where is the promise of His coming? For since the Father fell asleep, all, uh, uh, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Do you know there is marked in the last days those who will mock and scoff the promises of God. Amen. Where is the Lord's coming? Where is He? He said He's coming. He must have fell asleep. Amen. But be it known. Amen. Uh, every child of God, let hope rise up within you because hope maketh not ashamed. Amen. The hope that is within us helps us with an earnest expectation to look for the second coming of the Lord. Amen. God is coming back. And even though people mock and scoff God. Amen. Let's not live to the firstborn, but let's live to the secondborn. Amen. I don't want to possess the spirit of Ishmael, but I want to possess the spirit of Isaac. I don't want to be the disobedient, but I want to be the obedient, knowing that God will not be mocked. Galatians 6, 7, 8 says this, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that will he also reap. For he that soweth to it the flesh shall reap of the flesh corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Amen. God is faithful. And every promise and every word that He said, He will keep. I want you to listen to something. Many years ago, He's passed on many years ago, but there was a professor at, 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 at Yale University, one of the greatest geologists ever to live in America, and he said this uh, as he addressed uh, Yale University. He said, young men, as you face scientific problems, remember that I, an older man, who have known only science all my life say to you that there is nothing truer in the universe than the scientific statements in the Word of God. Amen. Don't be a scoffer. Don't be a mocker. But take God at His Word. All the things about a centrifugal force, all those things about centrifugal force, amen, it is true when God has established it. And just as true as there are laws of nature and science, there are also moral laws. Amen. And when God writes those moral laws, amen, be it known to you that God will keep those laws. Do you know that when the ocean experiences an earthquake, Sister Dot, it may be up to two years before the shore ever sees what is happening in that ocean from that earthquake as it brings to shore the things, Brother David, uh, that, that, that was uh, uprooted and devised by that earthquake. Amen. Rest assured, we may not see it, but the current of God's laws will bring to pass truth. He is coming back. And for those who love Him and live righteously and keep His laws. Amen. He will appear. And He's coming for a people who has been faithful to Him and has not scoffed or mocked Him. Amen. 
Amen. We'll be known by our fruits. We can't bring forth both bitter and, and sweet water. Amen. Light does not have fellowship with darkness. And, and, and we have to know that we can overcome evil with good. Amen. That whatever we will reap, we will sow. And so the Galatians, even though they were an established church, the Bible says Paul addresses them and says, you've been bewitched. You think that no matter how you live, that you won't face the consequences of that. But God said, you will face the consequences of how you live. If you sow to the flesh, you're going to of the flesh reap corruption. But if you sow to the Spirit, all the other Spirit you're going to reap. Brother and sister, I want to tell you, there's more to live in our life for what our flesh wants to live. Amen. Let's live by the Spirit of God. Our flesh may want to do its own thing, which is contrary to God. Our flesh may want its own way and has its own appetites. Amen. But if we sow to the flesh, we will of the flesh reap corruption. But if we sow to the Spirit, oh, don't be a mocker. Don't scoff. Amen. So in the Spirit, that you may of the Spirit reap great things. John said this, if you look in the mirror and you see that you've sinned, you say, I've not sinned, you only deceive yourself. I'll talk to us a few moments then. I don't want to move on. But we as a church, are we mocking God? Are we scoffing at the promises of God? We know that He is returning, but we live as if He'll never return. We know that He has commanded us to live holy and morally, but we live like we'll never face the judgment of God, so we live according to the flesh. That is mockery to God. But even as you said, we never enter into the deep things of God because we don't realize that soon and very soon we're going to face eternity. Whether by way of the grave or whether by way of the rapture, we will face God soon. And God help us that we've lived our life to the Spirit. You know, sometimes you can say, Brother well, Seville, you preached a great message. Amen, Brother David, you said it well. We can be stirred by that ever being changed. God, Change me. I don't want to be stirred knowing that I need to live differently and I need to think differently. But change me, God. See, there's a spirit of mockery. There's a spirit of deception. And there's a spirit that says you're okay holding on to things that, 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 that you want to hold on to. But that spirit comes from Satan. And it's contrary to God. Amen. God, uh, uh, the Bible says in 2 Timothy 3.13, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Amen. That's the pattern of the last days. I mean, they have it so far off. Amen. In our culture, we pay people big bucks to play all kinds of sports. And, and those leaders uh, in those sports arenas, uh, they, they, they shake their fist at God. They spit in the face of God. And those are the people that, that are directly our culture. Let me tell you, there's coming a day where God will not be mocked. Amen. Amen. It's not only the culture of our world, but it's slipping into our churches saying, well, well, I can live whatever way I want. I can live without boundaries. I can live to the flesh. I can nurture this. And then that's not pleasing to God. And God says all the time, be not deceived. I won't be mocked. You see, we go down the road and we stand and then we sit and we mock God by saying, but I can hold on to this and still feel the presence of God. I can live this way and I can still attend church. Pastor don't know. Other people don't know about it. And all the time God says, I see. And I know. I'm preaching to the church. Amen. God will not be mocked. There's something that's so important to realize that we can't fool God. We can't out outwit Him. And some folks say, well, I'm under grace. And they take grace to the extreme. Yes, God's grace is wonderful. Amen. It is amazing, as John Newton wrote about. But we cannot use grace as an excuse to sin and live beneath the morality and the holiness of a holy God. 
There's something we've got to be careful. Yes, there's a firstborn nature in every one of us. And the secondborn, if we're not careful, the firstborn can mock and make fun of. There are some folks, man, they used to live holy, they used to live close, they used to be faithful to the things of God. You would have never thought they'd be in the position that they're in today. You know what the problem is? They listen to the firstborn too much. As the firstborn mocked and scorned their Isaac, the secondborn, the spiritual birth. God help us to get rid of the Ishmael's that Isaac may be nurtured and left. Literally in the Greek, when we look at that deceived and being deceived and mocking God, it means to turn up our nose at to sneer God. Amen. Some people, they can go overboard on God's grace, but realize that God is also holy. Amen. If we're a child of God, the only thing that we'll really want to please is God and not ourselves. Can I say that again? If we're really the child of God, the thing that we'll want to please more than anything else is our Heavenly Father and not ourselves. We're willing to pray the price. Amen. When we look at the laws of God's holiness and what God calls us to, we will not sneer and we will not mock. We will not lift our nose up at it. But oh, we'll say, God, I, I, I remember your words which were spoken. Amen. Uh, uh, Jude says it this way, but beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How that they told you that there should be mockers in the last days who should walk out after their own ungodly lust, uh, they, uh, they be, uh, who separate themselves sensual and not having the Spirit, but beloved, building up yourself on your, or your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keeping yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercies of our Lord Jesus Christ until etern unto eternal life. Amen. The only cure for mockery is radical obedience to God. God, I want to be obedient. I want to be obedient. You see, it seems like God has a special place for the second child. We look at Abel, he offered a more excellent sacrifice. We look at Isaac, who laid himself down on the altar. We look at Jacob, who wrestled until the morning. Amen. There's something special about the second one. It's interesting, and I'm closing tonight. It's interesting that when we look at Genesis chapter number 25. Let me just turn there. It's better sometimes if I just read it. But in Genesis chapter number 25, really verse number 7, the Bible says, And these are the days of the years of Abraham's life which he lived, and a hundred, three score, and fifteen years, 175. And Abraham gave up the ghost and died in a good old age, an old man and full of years, and was gathered to his people. And his sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him. They came together. They buried him. In the field which Abraham purchased of, his, of, of the sons of, of, of Heath. Or Heth. There was Abraham buried in Sarah's wife. And it came to pass after the death of Abraham. That God blessed his son Isaac. And Isaac dwelt by the Lord. There's something that is spoken of Isaac more than Ishmael. Isaac, his life was blessed because Ishmael, the mocker, was gone. Thank you. Are there things in your life tonight? Are there things in your life tonight that mock you? from really getting a hold of God. Sister Holly, if you come to the piano, maybe you've been stirred, but you're not changed. You hold on to doubt when God wants there to be faith. You hold on to a lack of surrender because you're too content with the firstborn. And so it mocks the secondborn. God wants the secondborn. To have full reign in your life. It's easy to allow the Ishmael to rise up. 
Man, I hope I brought this forth tonight the way God spoke to me. In our flesh, our firstborn, we can rationalize nursing, nursing a grudge against someone. We can rationalize doing things that's appeasing to the flesh because it feels good, but yet it's contrary to the things of God. We can say, I don't need to live holy because the flesh in itself isn't holy in its nature. And so the whole time, this firstborn mocks the secondborn. Oh, you don't need to do that. You live by grace. God's, God's grace will cover all that. You don't need to worry about the fruits of the Spirit in your life. You don't need to be worried about walking in the Spirit. You don't need to worry about living a holy, sanctified life. It's okay, God's grace. When the whole time God says Ishmael is mocking Isaac. Ishmael is the one. The whole story of Hagar and Ishmael, man, I, in my mind, so often I thought about Ishmael being a little boy. But he's an 18-year-old man. The story's different. Sometimes some things can be big in our life. Send them down the road. You know all these Middle Eastern countries? That's Ishmael. They all had 12. God promised to both sides. But only the 12 after the Spirit of God is the one that reaped the blessings of God. God help us to reap the blessing because we got rid of the flesh. And we're living in the second plan. That means that we love without any type of condition. All people, all ages. That means that we're radical in our obedience to God. When we look at God's word, we look at the mirror, we say, God, I failed. Brother David, I'm like you. I look at my life and I see areas where I'm disappointed. The holiness of God. But you know what? I get rid of this shame. And so I keep an eyes on the Greek. I want to ask you, who's living in your life? The firstborn or the secondborn? God wants Isaac to be alive. Tonight, would you come and say, I don't want to just be stirred, but I want to be changed tonight.